good morning. Today we're in uh, the side dressing tractor, or what we like to call it, the pizza wheel tractor, pizza cutter tractor, whatever, something to that effect. Um, right now we're running a eight row kind of homemade. I guess you could probably buy it this way, but it's it's pretty much redneck engineered uh, uh, knife rig. And it's eight rows. And then we've got a 200 gallon elliptical tank strapped to the front of this uh, Maxim 150. Uh, it's a brand new tractor. Um, and then we're going to be running a Trimble uh, rate controller and guidance in here. So I do have auto steer in this tractor. Um, it's not as great as like the factory auto steer in um, the John Deere or uh, let's see what other track or like the, the magnums that we've got that actually have true uh, integrated auto steer goodness um, so yep we're just side dressing some corn right now uh, this is my first load of the day um, we're just putting out straight 32 right now so i think we're at about let's see i've got it set to 40 gallons an acre so give or take 135 140 units of nitrogen thereabouts um yeah so this right now we're just going to run uh, all the corn that hasn't been fertilized yet and so yeah, that'll be probably my job for the next couple of days, I would guess. Um, I know we've got some weather coming in. So, you know, as usual, that plays a factor into what is happening. But, yeah, so far so good. Um, I don't know whether or not um, this screen will be compatible with recording or not, or whether it's going to do that flickery uh, deal where the... Um, camera is actually taking pictures at the same rate that the monitor is flickering. So that's why that happens. If y'all didn't know, the screen is refreshing the same and turning off, turning back on the same time that the cameras are. So that's why that happens. And sometimes when somebody's filming a screen, it, it blacks out and it's like flickery. It's even the same thing with light bulbs. That's what's causing that. Get turned back around here. Um, I can't remember. Well, I guess, yeah, I do remember. Okay, this, so this field that we're in right now, um, this field was one of those fields that I planted uh, on film. And we, it was one of the times, it was like, are we done planting corn yet? Um, this was one of these fields that fell into that category of, man, are we done yet? Because uh, this was one that we found out basically the day that we planted it. It's like, hey, this is uh, ground that's free and, you know, can y'all plant it? And so that's the same reason why we don't have any uh, fertilizer on it at all is because, um, you know, we didn't know we were going to have it. Usually out here we do pre-emerge, uh, or not pre-emerge, pre-plant actually, uh, fertilization. And uh, we contract that out to a guy that's got a big terrigator floater, and then he just floats it on, and then we just go in and use our uh, turbo, uh, yeah, I guess turbo till, case I use turbo till, or um, we've got a John Deere fuel cultivator. And so we'll either work it in one of those two ways. So, like I said, this field we just didn't know that we were gonna have, so we ended up that, it's going to get uh, knifed in with uh, the nitrogen it needs. So I'm going to show this off real quick. So this tracker, we've got uh, our red ball gauges right there and a pressure gauge, which doesn't work. Uh, and then over here, we've got the Trimble monitor. So I'm going to put it down. And then here, I'll start. Roll I'll engage auto steer with that button. And then I'm going to turn the pump on right there. So that, see now spray bar is working, 
guidance and then it's going to show my paint pattern right there as you can see my current tank level i've got about 47 gallons left according to this thing i actually think based on what i'm seeing out there it's uh, a little less but then i can go to page two here and i can see what my actual applied rate is and right now uh you know it's 38 i'm asking it to do 40. Um, we're doing about four and a half miles an hour i don't know if y'all can see that or not um so it's it's getting pretty close to what i'm asking it to do uh disregard this up here where i have it set at 11:37. i just completely forgot to um switch it over to 3200 which if y'all don't know what that is that's uh 32 nitrogen uh fertilizer and then I guess I can go ahead and describe. So 1137 is going to be um, 11 pounds, or not 11 pounds, 11% 11 uh, nitrogen and 37% phosphorus. So we get to the end of the row here, flip that off, kick the clutch, lift the bar up, let it roll backwards just because we're on a hill, let the clutch back out. And then I've already done this area here as you can kind of see. So we'll drive up to the next eight rows, right there. Trying to get the tractor lined up pretty good. We'll back up. That's probably good enough there. Put it back and forward. Put the hitch down. Let it start rolling forward. Engage auto steer. Flip the product on. And that's pretty much what you got to do all day and then the trembles are really bad they just sit here and do these stupid uh warnings the entire time part of that's because this tractor is um i'm not gonna say it's not compatible with auto steer but because that's not accurate it is um the issue is that it's just a uh, tractor that doesn't come from the factory with an auto steer system and so you know we're having to install a bunch of controllers and everything else in here um, to make it work um, the other thing i'll say um, we're using a hydraulically driven pump so as you can see here i've got the first remote locked in uh, to the constant mode um, so that's that's pretty much what i see while i'm working the whole time just you know watching watching those red balls i don't know how well i'll be able to see it but there's little red balls in each of those tubes that um, you want that to be pretty level across um, to indicate that the, the fertilizer is flowing evenly across all eight rows. And then you just watch this. I'm watching the guidance line. I'm watching to make sure the tractor is actually driving down um, the rows as this field was not planted um, with this tractor. So the guidance line is not the same. And like, so here, when we get into the turn row, right here, we just put um, 16 on. And I just wanted a place to turn around because when I planted this, it was super muddy. So as you can see, we are driving over corn to put fertilizer on. And so that's one of the downfalls of having to go back in and fertilize or uh, spray or do anything else. Um, you try to drive over as little as possible. And so I'll put y'all here on the center of the steering wheel maybe i can give you all the perspective that you need um so basically that hood ornament right there you're trying to line that up between those two rows except you have to be thinking about where those two rows fall between the back tires because the back tires are what's going to set the implement so there's quite a bit to think about um, when you're freehanding and so that's why so many people um, enjoy having a GPS is so that they can uh, focus more on what's going on around instead of having to drive the tractor and uh, you know drive the tractor down the road straight and um, what I'm trying to say the see I've got so much going on here I'm having to think and talk at the same time um, See, I'm back on GPS, now I can actually think. Uh, what I was saying is, when you're, on, when you're not on guidance, you have to be so um, particular about how you drive to be perfectly down the middle of the roads like this. And so, 
it's something that takes a lot of practice it's something that takes a lot of mental focus and so that's why a lot of people nowadays are going to gps and the amount of uh, product that's saved and time that's saved energy that's saved it's it's a uh, it's really impressive. Um, the farm at home, we really don't have uh, too much, uh, nothing that we have at home on full guidance. So for me, it's a treat when I get to use it out here. But it, it really opens your eyes to the fact like, hey, like this is a, a lot of work relative to no, not having it so if you have gps be thankful for it because it's it is a very useful tool it definitely saves time money and labor but i think we're just about out of product so i'm gonna go ahead and head back to the shop and um refill and i will catch y'all when we're back there and refilling So, for you, those of you that don't know, fertilizer, uh, at least the synthetic liquid kind and synthetic dry kind, are very corrosive. And so, uh, I'm not trying to expose my camera equipment to fertilizer because it'll rust everything, like basically overnight. Like, it, it's very very uh detrimental to metal so um i am gonna try to get a little bit of time lapse footage however it might not be the highest quality just because I'm trying not to uh mess up a camera and i mean it's so corrosive that because these are you know technically leased tractors um, you know because it's the least tractor we'll, we'll probably uh, end up pressure washing this tractor tonight before I go home just because of how corrosive the fertilizer really is so okay so we're gonna try this again so I got this little headband deal that we're gonna try and I'm gonna give you all the first person's perspective of what I'm seeing while I'm driving. So this little area here um, was planted with our Kinsey eight row planter and that planter is not equipped with uh, guidance. So it didn't get planted with guidance means it can't get fertilized with guidance so i'm having to steer this so that's why it's simpler for me to um just you know have you all up there on my head and not have to worry about it now i i think i look like an absolute clown while wearing this but that's aside from that's beside the point you know nobody's out here seeing seeing what i'm doing you know I'm just out here in the cab by myself so, and I've already messed up uh, because I was talking to y'all and not paying attention. So let me back up. I'll give you a little secret on backing up. When you have a three point implement, you put that top linkage down the middle two rows. And use that as your steering point. That's how you'll never run over anything. Okay, so we're backed out of the rows, put the tractor back and forward with shuttle shift, put the uh, three point down, and then we're gonna come over here, flip the fertilizer on, and why is it not painting? Why is there no product being applied? What happened? Something funny is happening here. Let's back up again. I don't know what happened there. Let's try this one more time. I 
I don't understand. And I ran over some corn. Excellent. I don't know what happened there. That's really strange. Uh, let's give her some speed. That is really strange. Goodness. It's a little wet uh, back here yet, I get. Um, but, we're supposed to get another like two inches of rain. Okay, kick it on. Okay, it is spring now. Or, you know, or applying, whatever you want to call it. Okay, and our red balls are flowing. Oh, see, it's giving me a warning saying I'm below the target rates because we're putting so much down that it can't keep up. Uh, the pump's too small to drive that fast. So about four and a half, four and a quarter on the monitor. That's about as fast as we can go. Uh, you know, it's not too terribly slow. I would love if we could go closer to six, six and a half, but I mean, we haven't gotten that many acres done today, but we honestly don't have that many acres to do, so I'm not too worried about it. But basically, you know, I'm using this steering wheel with the hood ornament, and then because of the way that this implement's set up, you gotta drive a little bit off to the right of center so that you're not hitting corn plants. That's about good right there, about three to four inches away from the plant is all you need at this stage because it's pretty short the roots aren't developed all the way yet so as far as functionality on this monitor i'd kind of went into earlier about how uh we got guidance on here obviously on this uh application here we can't run guidance it just wouldn't work um, because you know it's planted with row markers not GPS like I said so really the only thing that I'm looking at is uh, you know how many gallons I've got left in the tank and then my rate just kind of flip back and forth between those two and then just obviously driving the tractor down the rows turning around looking to make sure I'm not plowing any corn out so it's really really a pretty simple job um, it just requires some focus and you know I need this hand free to operate the uh, on and off switch now some functionality that this thing does have that uh, this particular application uh, that we're doing just doesn't work with um, it has an automatic section control uh, system here basically what that does is that doesn't allow you to uh, apply over something you've already applied so for instance if you had turn rows on the ends and you applied those first which would be the typical procedure for most people would be to apply those first um, then by doing that your um, this uh, system here will sense that hey you already applied there it'll cut the rate down to zero while you're on the turn rows and you don't have to worry about flipping the switch on and off every time but like in this situation obviously we don't have any uh turn rows so it doesn't have a boundary map for this either so we're having to flip it off every time so it's just one more button you gotta push one more button you gotta remember to turn back on but overall, this is not a very complex task. So we'll get to the end, flip it off, lift it up. And then this tractor has a turning radius of about 16 rows. We're applying eight. So that means uh, you either have to go back to the same ones or you gotta go to the end, which I'm gonna go down here to the end just because I feel like doing a little bit of a change of scenery because I'm tired of turning right back around. So for eight rows, I turned too late, but I'll get it, put it down, turn it on. Um, eight rows, you know, obviously you count three from the end, put the tire in that between the third and the fourth row and you're good.
but basically this is what I've been doing all day it's pretty monotonous work um, so you know I'll probably go ahead and actually call it right here really appreciate everybody that's watching and subscribing um, as I kind of mentioned early on my whole goal with the channel uh, was to you know just document what I do on a daily basis because uh, you know it, I think that this will be really interesting to see how technology has changed and YouTube's just a great way because you know that's kind of going to be there indefinitely what it looks like you know as far as uh, how long YouTube's going to be around so the ability to have a online document you know basically turns into an unlimited storage situation where you know I've got unlimited storage for free on the cloud and it's just through the, the means of YouTube so you know that's that's pretty cool to me at least that I can just throw all my videos up um, you know and if somebody wants to learn something off of one of my videos uh, more power to them like I'll, I'll make them pretty educational because uh, it's you know going back and watching something it's like what, what was I doing here so you know that's something that's like okay if I at least explain a little bit of what I'm doing then I'm reminding my future self I go back and watch them what I was doing um, but I just think the whole concept of kind of documenting uh, what what you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis is pretty cool so anyway like I said appreciate y'all watching and stay tuned for the next one